Hello guys, so welcome to tonight's evening show. My name is Matt Jokes, and you're on JFL TV, the home of football. So if today is the first time we see our program, for you, they bring you the latest Arsenal news update as they drop all over the world. So for now, I will start with tonight's evening show. So you are right. Don't come and they talk about the match you'll play against Bournemouth. So Baba, they give you an analysis. So you can do so with the power of hindsight now. The Ateta is supposed to start one area for that. So one area is supposed to play for that game. And this report was put out by the Metro. They say Asta Youngster, 81 area, should have started against Bournemouth, says Ian Wright. And when you read the entirety of that fantastic report that was put out today, they say Ian Wright says he did not like the makeup of Arsenal's midfield against Bournemouth and believes Michael Ateta missed a trick not starting Itewane on the South Coast. And in fact, but back when they explain, but when you read the entirety of the report, you can talk how this thing even affects in your picking, you get because in Son, when they lose that match, you'll be like, Thanos, don't come. Like, and I listen to where be for major Arsenal fans, many, many, myself gone, I was not feeling myself that dinner. In fact, the Arsenal don't carry us go level with you, say, even draw, draw, no, they accept it again. Not to talk of losing, you get that, that level with dinner, level with you, say, we know my normal about ourselves, we believe so, we feel like anybody anybody like no mercy you get no one talk of uh bombers now but back on the experience there was something about it when you saw the teams and how bombers are when they are down there it feels like or it felt like it was going to be a tough game ex arsenal and england striker Ian Wright said on the righty house podcast obviously the whatsapp blows because people are going crazy i was watching it with my sons and he cannot take it if Arsenal lose, it's like Thanos has come. <laughs> but then I'm thinking to myself, for us to lose one game and for everybody to lose their mm, so much that about our disciplinary record and the fact that we're missing two players and that's it. Even if you are missing two players like Bukayo Saka or Odegaard, you cannot lose against Bournemouth. Ah, you still got to go there and win something. I'll see Baba Kondi explain what's the thing we say, the level of dinner, Baba, the expectations are high. Ah. Nobody won't lose any game or won't draw. So draw the maybe with the part and not the dog of losing. But it is what it is. And like I said in the morning, you get now that I get the final say we can all just constructively criticize Ateta's lineup and everything, but he has the final say. And we we have the power of hindsight to actually look back and uh, come for Ateta's head. Ateta before the lineup, he not really gets a power of hindsight. And to buttress my points. When we were doing the pre-match analysis, the line of come aside, I was asking all the people. Then we had like 700 people watching the show. I was asking everybody, what do you think about the lineup? People joined the show. What do you think about the lineup? Majority, if not 95%, are saying the lineup, the okay, Sachus, we will knock them 3 0. Ah, Sachus, I love this lineup. Nobody comes and say the lineup, no good. Everybody loved it. But because of the context and the way we didn't lose the game, now, it, with the power of hindsight, now, you can now say, okay, looking back, I think that lineup, you know, makes sense, which is right. Yes, with the power of hindsight, you can actually see what Ateta never saw. Now, based on the match you won't play today, don't forget to play Shakhtar Donetsk. I want to check what did the bookmakers give Shakhtar Donetsk for this match? Baba, the way they give Shakhtar Donetsk points, they go see Shakhtar Donetsk and shit back on paper. They give them 21 odds, 21 to beat Arsenal. That's that's a far, that's a long shot. They can't give them about uh, they can't give us now 1.14 to win this game. Straight draw now, like 10 odds. For you to say straight draw gone and a long shot. And why is this so? It is because due to the war in Ukraine, FIFA, from what I hear, they can't put out a loss. Okay, if you are a foreigner in Ukraine, you can actually cancel your contract early and leave because there's a war you get. So many of their best best players, when you get Ukrainian heritage, they left. That's why again, one guy way um uh, Tottenham was poor sign. Ah, got name knock off my head now. We be say Arsenal be the go for the guy before the guy like a lady master. Now one self come out. So Tottenham was one Ukraine uh, shattered business when they get issue. They say they go carry Tottenham was go cost because because of the war the guy cancel contract go join them. See sports must pay their money. You get so that one self sub. So today they are coming apart from Sudakov. Like who do we know there? So most of it will happen, but anything apart from an Arsenal win today, not just win, win convincingly to appease the fans. But what's happened against Bournemouth? Win well to make us forgive Una. Not be the goal one zero. Win well. Like this match. Anything about the draw will be chaotic. I tell you for free, go right and down. 
anything apart from a win rather is going to be chaotic so we must win this game in fact i was watching one video on sky sports the ref when i ref watch the column so sky sports can't talk something i can't the reason i'm saying oh they they they, they celebrate bernardo silva for disturbing jose sa saying go disturb the keeper then he can't distract him john stones can't score in fact one of the analysts there called it clever that bernardo silva was clever that he did it very well they praised them so contrast and compare that if Arsenal do it becomes dark arts it becomes negative way of playing football it becomes you are distracting the goalkeeper but when man city does it it becomes ah that's a clever play that's very good you get you make a little in fact let's let's but he's onside. But he's allowed to do that because he's onside. Look at him, what's that? Because saying? can you imagine? He's allowed to do that. that Bernardo Silva is allowed to do what he did. He's onside. But if na Arsenal, you know, go hear this type of positive take, there are negative takes against us. Now you go to hear. Let's let's go. You can't be offside from the corner. So again, it's it's. I, I get what you're saying because of the situation, but. I can hit you all I want until Dermot heads the ball. So it's Sorry. clever. Oh, it's really it's clever. It's yeah. Yeah. You get the answer. So it's clever that Bernardo Silva then said, oh, it's really clever. Imagine, go and look at the one we will do against a man since we Martinelli the blocker. Did anybody ever come out and say, Arsenal were clever? Mm, Martinelli distracted the goalkeeper, uh, Gabriel Magalhães, not Amienta. No. All they were saying was, dark arts, dark arts. Hey, Arsenal, can you come? You got. In fact, I remember somebody even come out and talk to me and change the rule. Say Asna, they exploit people. Was it not Graham Saunes? Come on, some of them change the rule. There'll be like three different journalists or pundits. It should not be journalists, then be there. Just the pundits. There'll be three different pundits who come and say, talk, say, where they change the rule, Asna exploiting people. In fact, first of all, they don't change that. First. When Ben White, they distract keeper, she be the come bring out a new legislation this season. So may nobody do them again. Did you ever hear anybody come out and say Ben White was clever? Come on. So, so clever. Because I spoke to Tim Howard about it yesterday yeah. and he was like, it's a goal. Goalkeeper, he was like, it's so smart. But now... Ah, the more they watch out, the more they make me the boy. It's so smart. It's so smart. But now it's not done. It's the dark art. Oh, my God. And what you've got to do is you've got to get another player in front of your goalkeeper to shift that player out the way and stop them having that impact. Or your keeper Double comes standard. and deals with the situation. And a key issue there, as Stephen says, is the fact that it's corner. So he has an amnesty from offside. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's the issue. He, he can literally go up and down, up and down, do whatever he wants until yeah. Stones heads that ball. It's only when Stones heads that ball that his position changes in view of the offside. And, and he's so quick to move, though, Bernardo Silva, isn't he? And because he, peel, he, he peels up... The last... <laughs> Because they analyze football, see how they take the analyze. He peels it off. The most Gallagher did their service, they support their yes, it's clever. They peeled it off. We're gonna apply this same standard for Arsenal, even at the analyze Arsenal own. You get that's all what we call for consistency. You get now the only thing we would call for, but we know we can never see consistency when discretion is the order of the day. That's just it. Am I surprised? No, because I know there's a bias. Get and a part of the thing where Gary O'Neill they talk is it that there's this subjective? Why they say subjective? Is it there's this subconscious bias for Man City whenever the player does something? That's why in the morning I ask you, when was the last time Man City collected two yellow cards and led to a red? Remember, check. When was the last time it happened? I can't remember. Well, it is what it is. Now Sky Sports going to let us know say. This thing we at the color um, at the players, Arsenal players, the color red cap up and down. She a bad luck. I mean, I see they don't get they don't be disciplined. For me, I will tell you for free that's in a bad luck. You get, I don't think it has anything to do with discipline. You get now, just will get bad luck because if to say now the same punishment we would get as we do and every other person they get, uh -huh, I will say we don't get discipline. But as long as say people still they do and they jello, then a bad luck. So which we know jello. Now the way with me, I see her. You get so, but you don't have to say that. Now, the London Evening Standard going to say Jack Wilshere, they're very, very close to leaving Arsenal after agreeing uh, this is a Norwich move. From what they hear, say the deal already they signed, like very, very close, very close. Say Wilshere feels the move should advance his coaching career, which is true. Get Norwich will play Preston on Tuesday, which I think is today, and they have a day off 
on Wednesday, and we share we start when the players are back on Thursday. You get but my obviously say, I wish I'm not the best life has to offer because he's leaving us now this week to take up coaching role at Norwich. So they look for another coach now for our under 18. So I wish him all the best. Now, surprisingly, this was shocked me. I didn't expect that. They said data shows Arsenal enjoy lenient refereeing decisions as Man City are treated most harshly. Now, according to the statistics, we opt to put out to say for every five tackle we Arsenal make before you go see a yellow card, but for every two tackles or two point something tackles, let's say three tackles, we Man City make uh, the, 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 the blow against them. No, don't be card now blowing yeah, because I think we need to read. Put in the right and say Arsenal enjoy more lenient referring decisions compared to all big six sides with Man City uh, punished more harshly. That's according to Upstar data gathered by Talksport Bets, who reports that uh, across the first eight game weeks of Premier League season, the Gunners have averaged 5.3 fouls for every yellow card. Okay, 5.3, almost six fouls for every yellow card that they have picked up. And for Manchester City, they have averaged a booking every 2.83, let's say every three foul. If this is the statistics, then truly, truly, then they judge Manchester City stricter, more harsh than Arsenal. But the thing is, we don't see this thing in the field of play, but data does not lie because I can't argue against the data unless the data they falls. Yes. They say Chelsea, they average 2.93. Then Manchester United, they average 3.42. From this data, where they see, because get another person, they 5.2 something. Uh, okay, Liverpool get 5.28. So, which means. Arsenal and Liverpool get better relationship with referees. We they commit like five, six fouls for getting a look at. That's what the data is suggesting. No be me talk. So if the data is true, so you no know, mago mago, the data is true, then we need to concede. Say the referees they give Man City cards per foul more than we. But if that be the case, why we not they see them get two yellow cards and lead to a red? Because if truly now every two three foul that they collect card then why we don't we see these things so that's part of the argument to me at the ask well we can never get the answer now currently say ask now the, the monitor 120 year old and uh, nico parts will be a real madrid player but the guy they on loan to como so they said the guy is a very very good player Arsenal looking to improve the attacking units even further next year alongside the striker that they said uh to end a winger so go i don't try to Hasting the show because you no know, say our match will play against uh, Shakhtar Donetsk. It will still start by eight o'clock. So we can all run the evening show quickly so that we will feel open the studios early. So the say I started interested in the player that the guy is a very very good player. He starts in career for Real Madrid youth side, born in Spain, and he has a chance to represent Argentina. You get so from the look of things they say the guy good. I, mean, I don't know him before, but from those who they hear, they saying they good. Now, another story we can get from the Daily Mail and I say, I did a hire secret undercover football freestyler with a disguise as a waiter to destroy one of the Arsenal stars in pre match motivation drill. Now, Zinchenko, now they tell us this story. So, no matter for the hotel where they did, they did play sometimes. I tell you, the staff of the hotel will play friendly match with the Arsenal players. So, they will just draw a sharp, sharp, sharp. So, I tell you, come bring you one freestyle. Because, okay, today, we know they do say we will play match with the staff. Now, now, freestyling. So a normal number for Arsenal, now Zinchenko will be the highest baba for freestyle. So everybody come to talk, say, ah, I'm um, Zinchenko go destroy this guy. Oh yeah, Kochi, no Jawa, Zinchenko go finish him, you get. So um, when the thing starts, it shock everybody because Baba said we stayed at the same hotel. I'm reading from the second paragraph. We stayed at the same hotel before the match and we knew all the waiters, but there was a new guy that day. So before we got to the stadium, I think I said, okay, let me wake you up because we need energy. Zinchenko told the guardian, Last time, Alex, we played against the players. You beat the set piece coach, the Jova. Let's do it the same, <laughs> but freestyling. Now, everyone was like, what? For sure, Alex will beat him, blah, blah, blah. Nico started to do something with the ball, and suddenly it looks like he got an injury, but it was so obvious but weird. Then they called the new waiter. We didn't know he was a professional freestyler. You get He destroyed me with his tricks, and all of us were in deep shock. But then we were all laughing and went to the game with good energy so i think that you look for uh, non also kind of non-conventional ways of trying to you know ginger the guys get think of something out of the box the aside of normal thinking use and ginger them and i like the way i think i get a good relationship with the players now the the mirror for the letters don't say six Premier League clubs they break new rules around gambling sponsorship because normal normal 
all those Premier League clubs who they get uh, like Spurs bet, S Bow bets, all those kind of names or that shit. If you want to sell the jersey, you need to sell a replica. We don't get that logo. But when you just say those clubs that they see they sell the shirts with that logo are minus the wear up, say no good. The Premier League rule states that you need to ensure that mechanisms exist to enable supporters to have the ability to purchase adult replica kits that do not include gambling sponsorship logos in the event that they are not otherwise available for purchase. However, after being contacted by pitch inspection, six clubs, Aston Villa, that they run a sponsorship with Betano, Brentford, Hollywood Bets. Everton, Stake.com, Fulham, Spot Up, uh, Northam Forest, Cayune, and Southampton, Roll Beats. They no get replica whether they sell to that smallly and you know make a whole lot of sense. So, my dear, all of us, the biggest news of the night, and the fact that Ian Wright is calling for uh, a Teta. Say, Baba, you do mistake on the little play Bournemouth. You're supposed to play it a but as you say, you know, play him. with the power of hindsight, I can tell you for free, there was no creativity in that team. You get so you need to make amends. Maybe, maybe. Against uh, Shakhtar the Nets due to the pressure now, don't they ramp up on it and money based on say we lose? If you say we win, nobody will talk about this thing. That's the power of hindsight. Gets that's why if we check now, then I talk about how we go play uh, Liverpool, Saliba go this, Saliba go this. Enough, you know. Now, the power of hindsight will let you know whether okay, without Saliba against Liverpool, we go suffer or we no go suffer. If you say oh, big bomb on 5 0, anybody will come and second and talk say, why not play with it and money? That's what hindsight gives you. So, I think it's a fine place for us to call the show and end. So, it's like come your way. Later tonight for the pre match analysis for the match against Arsenal and Shakhtar the next event. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of the nights. Now, good night. All right, guys. Bye bye.